The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Needs the faith of God to flow. I'll say that again. The anointing of God needs the faith of God to flow. No faith, no flow. God does nothing apart from faith in the earth. Now, that being the case, faith does not work in unrighteousness. Now, you got to get this. Faith does not work in unrighteousness. The Bible says all unrighteousness is sin. All of it. So it doesn't work in unrighteousness. No faith, no flow. Okay? So I need this flow. Are you following what I'm saying? The Bible says in Ecclesiastes and chapter 8 and verse 4, where the word of a king is, there's power. There's miracle working ability. Now why, why, why would I say that? Because this king sees himself, I'm just using him for what he that he sees himself righteous. Sees himself righteous, meaning, you know the expression, a king can do no wrong? That's where he got that from. That's where he sees himself. So he did. A king does. And the Bible says in Job chapter 22 and verse 28, Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established. Say amen to that. For you to get maximum performance out of this anointing that is on you, you need a superiority consciousness. One night I was in Minnesota. We were praying. Uh, it was Saturday night. We had started a church there. And that's when I was still with IBM. And I said, Lord, I need this message. I need a message for tomorrow. This is Saturday night. It's getting late. 12 noon, 12 midnight. And so, um, and, and I'm starting to beg now. God, give me a message. The people, I mean, I'm shedding a tear. The people need a message, Lord. He said, what are you doing? Right there, I knew I was in trouble. I said, I'm trying to get a message. He said, is that the way you come before me? You see what I'm saying? See, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. And then when you ask, you ask amiss. You ask out of line with the word. God's not going to go out of line with the word. He said, come what? Boldly. And that's what you're going to have to do. I said, well, all right then. Well, in the name of Jesus, I need a boy before I could get it out. Here come the word. I had to come like a king. I couldn't come like a beggar. And I'm telling you that anointing is on you. And the enemy's job is to make you feel inferior. 
make you look at yourself, look at your body, look at your hair, look at something, look at your grades in school, look at your prison time, look, but whatever it is that's in your background, he's going to have you do you look at it. But you got to forget that and, and, and replace that with you are an ambassador. Now watch this. An ambassador is protected. Matter of fact, wherever he is, is his own nation's jurisdiction. An ambassador lives in that country that he's sent to like his country who sent him. I'm saying if America sends an ambassador to another country, that's the way he's going to live. He's going to live according to America. He is not going to live in some hut according to a country that he went into. Got it? So I'm saying when God sends you out and Paul calls you an ambassador, then you're going to live according to heaven. Watch this. No sickness in heaven. So anytime you get sick or hurt or whatever have you, something takes place, God's going to heal you right there on the spot. Say amen. Why? Because he's going to have you finish your work with joy. Because there's nothing but joy in heaven for you. Say amen to that. So notice you got the you got the nature of God inside of you. The Bible says you are his offspring. Say amen to that. You got his maturity in you. You got his mind. The Bible says you have the mind of who? Christ. That's the same mind that created the world. You got that same mind in you right now. Paul said, let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. Say amen to that. Not only that, but you got the same power in you. You got the anointing in you that can fix you. That anything, listen, you scratch your finger, something happens, and in time it'll heal up. Am I right about it? Then if you scratch your your organ, if you something happens to you, God's got to wait. Lord, have mercy. Can I go into this for just a minute? See, God, Liki Shatarabohunda, God has made it so that you are custodian over the whole earth. I want to say owner, but that'll get some of y'all out of joint. You, God has made you an owner with stewardship responsibility. He put it up. He said in Psalms chapter 115 and verse 16, he said, heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to who? Children of men. Now he's given you the earth, but he's, there's some problems in the earth. Psalm chapter 82, verse one, please. There are some problems that are going on in the earth. He said, God stands in the congregation of the mighty and judges among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly except the person of the wicked? He said, defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Watch this. He said, deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand why, because they're walking in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. He said, well, wait a, wait a minute. Have I said you are God and all of you are children of the who? Most high. But he said, if you don't accept this, you're going to die like men. Now, my point to you is, we can get a hold of God. Put it up there, please. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. This thing, you got to see how it ties in together because the earth is yours. I said, the earth is yours. He said, therefore, I send you what things soever you desire when you pray. Believe you receive them and you shall have them. That's called a blank check. I said, that's called a blank check. See, everything God's going to do for you, he's already done. Come on, come on with me. Everything he's going to do for you is already done. The Bible says God inhabits eternity. So God, with God, he's in eternity where there is no time. The Bible said one day is a, is a, is a one day with the Lord is as a thousand days and a thousand days is one day. It doesn't make any difference whether you call about a thousand years or one day. They're the same to God. Why? Because God put time in the earth so that time can tell you what time it is. But what he did with it is he's above time. So he's seen the end from the beginning and he's got what you need at the end already in the warehouse. And when you take Mark eleven twenty four, you make requisition. 
you call for what you need when you need it. But it's not only there for what you need, what you need to minister to somebody else. God has put up billions to finance your ministry. It doesn't make any difference what you need. Folks, it's all right there. Say amen to this. Oh, Lord Jesus. See, we, 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 we tend to think, see, when he gave you the earth, he knew there were going to be problems. So he's laid up a solution. The Bible says over in Proverbs chapter 2, he's laid up sound wisdom for the righteous. He's laid it up so that you can get a strategy as to how to fix this thing. Now the enemy has called the problem, but God's going to undo it. He's going to undo whatever the devil did in your life. I tell you, before this session is over... Before this series is over, you're going to have some things undone. Because it was the devil that did it. Not only are you going to have them undone, but he's going to pay you. He's going to pay you. Are you following what I'm saying? See, he's ripped some of us off and we don't even know he ripped us off. All you know is that you're still broke. But God knows what happened. Watch this. And this is what he said over in Genesis 31. I've seen all that Laban has done to you. See, God keeps records. He keeps He keeps records. He got records of everything that's been done to you since you've been on the face of this earth. And you about to get paid. You about to get paid. All right, let me, boy, put that scripture up there. Now this, this is Genesis, Genesis chapter 20 and verse 3. Put that one up there first. In Genesis chapter 20 and verse 3, watch it, watch what it says here. But God came to Abimelech in a dream. Now Abimelech took Abram's wife. God ain't hearing that. He's not hearing him take your wife, your husband, your children. Come on, your business. He's not hearing them take anything. If devil has harassing you at all, God's going to put an end to it. That, do you believe that? Because that's where we're going now. But look what it says here. In a dream by night. And he said unto him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. For the woman that's which you have taken, she's another man's wife. Now therefore, restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for you, that you shall what? Live. Live. I mean, don't mess with him. No. Don't mess with Bill. Da, 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 da. Don't mess with Bill. Leave my Billy alone. Okay, now. <laughs> now, I'm going to show you he had to pay him back. Put the New Living up there, whatever translation we use. All right, look here. Look what's this. And Abimelech said, look over my land and choose any place where you would like to live. And he said to Sarah, look, I'm giving your brother a thousand pieces of silver. In the presence of all these witnesses. And this is a comp to compensate you for any wrong I may have done to you. And this will settle any claim against me. And your reputation is clear. You see what you've just done? See, you didn't rely on the court system of the world. Because it's some judges that ain't just. But you win to another system. God says, I'm the judge. And I will make them repay. And I'm about to say, you about to get paid. Everything that the devil has done to you, has shamed you, has uh, come on, stolen from you, you about to get it back with interest. Do you believe that?
Now let's go a couple more things. Say, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Now what is he saying here? All right. He is saying that now what's happening is God has now got it so that you have something called potential. You have something called potential. And God is going to use you to do some mighty things. Now you have to understand, God knows what your potential is. So, when God thinks about you, he doesn't think about you except in terms of your potential. Even some of the things that have not yet manifested, God knows he put that in you. And he knows what you can do. Say amen to that. As a matter of fact, you were birthed out of God. And he (laughs) has given you part. Of his potential and you are wired, glory to God, to operate like him. Say, I'm wired to operate like my father. Now, if you've accomplished something, you can enjoy that and you can appreciate it. But... Don't get hung up on it. Why? Because God's got some more for you to do. Paul said it like this. I count not myself to have apprehended. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13. But this one thing I do. Watch this. Forget it. Paul knew that sometimes the past can hold you in the past. So now the past, he no longer used it to motivate him. He was strictly looking at the future. Say amen. Amen. Now you can do that and, and, and that's fine. But God has big plans for you because there's a big God inside of you. And he's sent to you to do big things. Woo, that's a lot of bigness going on. God gave you potential to dominate the earth and everything in it. Say amen to that. So you can rule it, you can subdue it, and you can keep it under because you have the potential to make that happen. Say amen to that. Now, because people have not learned to live by faith and release the anointing that's inside of them, then a lot of what God wants to do in this earth has not been done. In fact, because of the lack of the manifestation of the sons of God, the world has experienced chronic insufficiency. 
Folks, what happened when they had all the people there and Jesus said, said feed them? Right there, the disciples started counting up their little money, didn't they? But they, they hadn't experienced heaven supply. There is a whole supply that the enemy uses if a person cannot access that, then he'll dry up certain communities. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying that your season has come. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. That's what he said over in 1 Kings chapter 18. Rain symbolizes the what? The anointing. So when that anointing comes, restoration takes place. Leadership is developed. Come on, all these things, it's going to turn you into another person. And signs, wonders, and miracles are going to take place. Now, let me say this. Here was a man waiting by the pool of Bethesda. John chapter 5. He was there... How many years? 38 years. He was waiting for the angel to come down and serve the pool. For it said that in a certain season, the angel came down, stirred up the water. And when he did, whoever jumped in first was made whole. Nobody else got healed. Jesus came over to the man and asked him a question. Do you want to be made whole? The man said, sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled. See, he's still thinking the water. But God is a healer. Jesus said to the man, what? Rise, come on, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man rose up, took up his bed and started walking. Now, what am I saying? That your weight is over. See, because you're in a different season. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Put up there Amos chapter 9, please. And chapter 9 and verse 13. Let's put it up in the message translation, please. Yes, indeed. It won't be long now. God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast, it's going to make your head swim. I'm saying right now, your wait is over. I said your wait is over. This man was there for 38 years, but when Jesus came... His wait was over. When the anointing showed up, here's a woman that had been had an issue of blood how many years? Twelve years. But when she heard, come on, of Jesus, here's David come to the front line. They had been fighting for 40 days. But David came forth and he said, I can take him. I got a lion. I got a bear. And I can take him too. And he walks to the front line and this is what he said. This day. Can't you see what I'm saying? He told Israel, your wait is over. (laughs) How about when Moses showed up down there with Pharaoh? See, Pharaoh thought he could hold him off and stall him and so forth. But no, no, no. Pharaoh said, let my people go. I mean, that's what Moses said. Pharaoh said, no, that's my economy. You ain't going to take my people. Here's what Moses said. Pharaoh, this day, (laughs) the wait is over. I got to get God's people out of here. I'm telling you, say, we're on a timetable here, and the wait is over. That God is going to do some things. Look what he says in Isaiah 65, 24. He said, it shall come to pass that what? Before you call, come on. 
I will answer, and while you are yet speaking, I'm going to hear you. All I'm saying is you sit in the waiting room, waiting to see maybe a physician or the dentist or whatever have you. We've got on the phone, and it'll tell you how much wait time you got. We'll be with you in 20 minutes. Or if you're waiting on payday, you oh, Jesus, I've run out of money. When is payday? Or if you're waiting on a job, boy, I can hope I can get this job. Or if you're waiting on a husband, oh, Lord, if you're waiting on healing, if you're waiting on, I don't care what it is, your wait 